presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week, Jungle Jim and the Reverend Chalmers carried Shanghai Lil, who had been shot, as she stood in front of her jungle altar, to her plantation house. There they discovered that all the wounded, she would recover. After he had dressed her wound, Jim said goodbye to the Batwoman, but she refused to say goodbye to him, telling him she loved him, and he'd be seeing her again. Collecting their things, Jim and the Reverend Chalmers left the plantation. Soon afterwards, they met Lynn, Chalmers, and Kolo, who were hurrying to their aid. After a joyful reunion, Kolo showed Jim where Jacques Labar had jumped off a cliff and killed himself. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. In her bed up in the plantation house, Shanghai Lil tosses restlessly. Niji? Niji, you black witch, where are you? Here, Niji, Missy. Where do you always disappear to? When I want you, I have to shout my lungs out because you're not around, and it still hurts me to raise my voice. Of course, you're not interested in that. Yes, Missy. Niji put clean cloth on Missy Lil. All right. But that's not what I called you for. Where's Mamba? Niji, no see Mamba, Missy. Has he run away, too? Maybe, Missy. Ouch! Go easy, will you? That's my neck you're working on, and it's sore. Missy, yes, Missy. Yeah, I'll take the bandage off myself. You fix the medicine. Yes, he, Missy. Jim and the Reverend left while I was asleep, did they, Missy? Yes, he, Missy. White one, catch them things belong them. Go. And you haven't seen Mamba since? No, Missy. No, see. Hmm. Give me my hand mirror. Oh, Heavens, I look a sight. No wonder Jim said goodbye. Yes, you see. Shut your face. If anyone can say the wrong thing at the right time, you certainly can. Give me that bandage. I'll do my throat up myself. Get my clothes, Niji. I'm getting up. Why, Tuan say you stay bed. He did, eh? <laughs> well, never mind what the white one said. You get me my clothes. Yes, you see. And you wait until I get my hands on that Jacques Labar. I'll fix him for this. Just another moment, and the parson would have said the words that tie the marriage knot. Yes, Missy. Of all the rotten luck, I finally get Jim and the parson into a spot where Jim says he'll marry me. The sky pilot starts reading the will files, and bang, everything goes black. I still think I answered the parson before I was shot. Here, you can take this away. Yes, Missy. No, not the mirror. It's bandage. If I answered the parson's question... Then Jim and I are as good as married. Oh, I wish I knew where he is. If I knew... What was that, Niji? Shell, Missy. Mamba was the only one to blow a shell. See, that's Mamba. Here, see, Missy. Mamba back. Him come now. Come in. Missy. Well, where have you been, Mamba? Me look see where white ones go. Oh, you trailed Jim and the Reverend, eh? Yes, see, Missy. Well, where'd they go? Go by look see boys out there. Pass my sentries at the boundary line. Yeah, go on. Find native boy and white Missy. What? I didn't get rid of them when I fired my gun into those moving leaves? No, Missy. Native boy, white Missy, lie. Oh. All go down Burwani. So that's why Jim wouldn't marry me, because of that girl. Mamba, well, I'm getting dressed. You get my air canoe ready. I'm going to have another talk with Jungle Jim. When Mamba told Shanghai Lil that Jim, Kolo, Lin, and the Reverend were going to Burawani, he didn't know they were heading for the camp which was deserted when the missionary was captured and taken to the plantation. It is at that camp we now find them. Well, folks, here we are, right where we started from. Yes, it seems ages since I pitched this tent. I think we're all lucky to be coming back to it. Mm, that's right, Lynn, we are. Uh, Kolu. Yes, it was. Let's have a look-see if our canoe was still hidden in the bushes. Uh, while you're doing that, Jim, Lynn and I will take stock of our things in the tent. Come along, Lynn. Right with you, Father. Now, let's see, Kolu. First, if I haven't almost forgotten myself where we hid that canoe. Welcome... There, Tuan Jim. You think so, Kolu? All right. Let's look over here, then. Look. Look, Tuan Jim. 
Welcome. The canoe. Hmm, you were right, Colo. Here, grab a hold of that end of it and we'll see if you'll float. Well, all our stuff's all right. They evidently only wanted to get Lynn and me. How's your canoe, Jim? Mm, looks okay. Just testing it to make sure it'll still float. All right, Colo. Let your end in the water. Well, there it goes. Looks good and seaworthy to me, Jim. Yeah, so far, so good. Uh-huh. Now, Colo, get our gear stowed away. We're shoving off pretty quick. I uh, don't suppose you care to hang around here any longer either, Reverend. No, I don't particularly care about it, Jim, but I'm going to. What? You aren't coming back with Colo and me? No, Jim. My place is here with these natives. I must lead them from the pagan worship of the Batwoman to the paths of righteousness. Mm, but now that Labar's dead, uh, perhaps Shanghai Lil will leave these parts. She won't be able to control the natives alone. True, Jim, true. But she may get herself another overseer, you know. And if she does, I must be on the field of battle. Mm, I can understand how you feel, Reverend, but I still think you might just as well come back with me now. Lily Devril is all washed up as far as that Batwoman stuff is concerned. Why, you heard what Labar told Colo just before he jumped off the cliff? Yes, I know. He said there was no more mumbo-jumbo, and that your boy should spread the word. I hope he told the truth, Jim. At any rate, I'm going to stay here and see that there's no more black magic. But what about Lynn? Lynn's staying with me. I'll be glad to take her out of the jungle for you, sir. I'll see that she gets back to civilization again. Thanks very much, Jim. But I couldn't ask you to do that. You've done enough for us already. Besides, Lynn has made up her mind that she'll never be separated from me again. Well, I'm sorry I can't persuade you to come back with me. Good luck to you, Reverend. Thanks, Jim. The same to you. Call who ready, Tuan Tim? Why, Jim, you're all packed up. You aren't leaving us. Yes, Lynn. Colo and I are shoving off. I'm not needed here anymore. Are you sure about that? Sure. You and your father are together, safe and sound again. Yes. But it will seem strange not having you around, Jim. <laughs> I bet it will. Nobody to order you around the way I did. Not just that, Jim. I meant... Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter what I meant. Jim, I want to thank you for everything. If I'd obeyed father and stayed at the hotel, I wouldn't have caused you all this trouble. Forget it, Lynn. I had a swell time. And I want you to know that I think you are... Yes, Jim? The pluckiest girl I've ever met. Oh. Yes, sir, Reverend. You can be proud of this daughter of yours. I am. Well, I I guess everything's all ready for Colo and me to shove off. Take care of yourself, Jim. And as soon as I repair the spiritual damage done by Lily DeVille, Lily and I will be coming down to civilization again. I hope that's a promise you can keep soon. All right, Colo. Let's push along. Yes, it's gone, Jim. Good luck to you both. Good luck to you, Jim, and thanks again. Goodbye, Jim. So long, folks. I sure will be looking forward to seeing you again. What we do now, Tuan Jim? The first thing we do is look up Patrick O'Shaughnessy Flynn. After that, well, you know as much about it as I do, Colo. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the cafe, a Chinese gentleman dressed in Western clothes enters and goes up to the bar. Well, sir, uh, what will you be having today? Kindly give one small glass beer, please. One small glass? <laughs> uh, you're sure that won't be too much for you? No, thank you. Shall be quite able to dispose that amount. <laughs> I should hope so. Well, every man to his own taste. Yeah. Here you are. Thank you. Sounding like airplane. Airplane? Holy St. Patrick. May one so humble as self ask why putting away glasses? You closing up honorable cafe? Me friend, I never see you before you started coming here two days ago. So I'm sure you don't realize uh, what that airplane means. It means the worst element down here is about to drop in. Very interesting. And if she has with her who I think she has, you'd better get out before that French Canadian pokes his ugly face in here and starts trouble. So sorry, not wishing to annoy. Just looking at you'll be enough for this fellow Labar. He's one tough customer. I'm putting away this glassware just to be on the safe side. Hello, Flynn. Shanghai Lil, you and that... Why, where's your pet ape, Labar? Labar? Labar is 
is dead. Dead? Lord have mercy on him. <laughs> That's the best news I've heard in months. I saw his body lying at the bottom of a cliff. Good riddance to bad rubbish, I say. For the first time in me life, I agree with you, Lily DeVrille. Well, now, uh, what brought you down here? Uh, looking for a new foreman? Yes, in a way. What do you mean by that now? Who's the China boy down there at the end of the bar? I don't know. He started coming in two days ago and just orders his beer and goes out. Well, wait until I get rid of him. Listen, my slant-eyed friend. If you finished your drink, get on your way. The bartender and I want to talk privately. Savvy? Very kind lady for suggestion. Quite understand. Excusing, please. Now, Flynn, you're Jungle Jim's friend. I am that. To the last drop of strength in these two arms and the last breath of life in me body. I know that he comes to see you the first thing when he hits town. He does that. Where is he now? I want to see him. I don't know, Lil. I ain't seen him for two months. Uh, not since he piked off after the Reverend and his daughter. Well, he's been my guest for the past few weeks. What? Oh, but he left my plantation and started down here. He must be due here if he hasn't already arrived. Say, if Jim has come to town and not passed the time of day with me, his old friend Patrick O'Shaughnessy Flynn... All right, Flynn, you seem to be telling the truth. I'll just hang around town a while. I want to see Jim about something. Well, it's the China boy again. Begging pardon, Breeze. Would be possible for one so lowly as self speak honorable bartender alone, please? Sure, and why not? It's okay, tea leaves. The joint's all yours. Well, so long, Flynn, for now. I'll be seeing you around. Yes. Honorable lady seems in position take great liberties. <laughs> Begara, you're right about taking liberties. But I'm afraid there seems to be some questions as to the lady being honorable. Indeed. That's very interesting. Well, let's forget her. What is it you want to see me about? Please, was given to understand I should meet Honorable Jungle Jim here. Can give information how can contact him? Sure, and Jim ain't been here for two months or more. Oh, very disappointed hear that. Have message for him. Uh, oh, but wait now. I'm just after here and he'll be pulling in here any day now. Uh, can I give him the message for you? Most kind, but afraid not. However, would you do me favor of presenting Honorable Jungle Jim with uh, this letter upon arrival? Sure, and I will that. Thank you. It is of utmost importance. Unknown to Jim, the river bears him toward the greatest adventure of his life. The dramatization you have just heard was taken from a scene of Jungle Jim, which appears in full-color action pictures in the Comic Weekly. The big Comic Weekly distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspapers everywhere. In the Comic Weekly, you will find all of the important characters who live in the world of color pictures including Skippy, Bringing Up Father, The Little King, Barney Google, Toots and Casper, The Cats and Yammer Kids, and many, many others. Don't forget our date next week, same time, same station, for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. Jim.